What's going on everybody? It's the bearded one back with another beer review. Um, right quick, I just can't get my dog to settle down, so you're just going to hear a clacking of uh, dog feet going around uh, in the video. Apologize for that. But today we're going to be doing Einstock's Wee Heavy. Um, for those of you not privy with the style, we heavy could also be referred to as a scotch ale or a scotch heavy or I think there's other names I read about it recently in Randy Mosher's uh, tasting beer video. Uh, but I'm not too privy with the style. This will be my first ever we heavy. So I'm real excited to get into it. Um, kind of some history, you know, Einstock being a Viking centric company uh, with their marketing scheme they're from uh, Iceland and then them making like a Scottish ale like trying to make the connection to that um, the Vikings did invade Scotland at one time um, and owned part of Scotland for a while and then so so that's kind of where the connection comes from why it makes sense for an Iceland brewery uh, to uh, brew a wee heavy and then their brewmaster even uh, studied in Edinburgh I believe um, so there's a lot of connections here between this style of beer and the brewery and um, I you know I read a little bit about the malt bill Let's see, they use locally farmed smoked barley spiced with native Icelandic angelica. So they use angelica root, as I, I was gonna say. Uh, and I don't know much about angelica. I've never even seen angelica. I've never tasted angelica. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to pinpoint it out or, or uh, elaborate on it. Uh, but a cool fact about angelica is um, it was thought to be like a mystical herb or something, and the Vikings used it as currency. So that's that's really cool, I think. I have had some uh, Einstock beer. They're one of my favorite breweries. I love their Arctic White Ale, uh, one of my favorite wit beers of all time. Um, I've had the Toast of Porter, and I'm not a toast. I'm not really a Porter fan. So, uh, take that however you want. I thought it was okay for a porter, you know? And, uh... I have not had the pale ale yet. Oh, I've also had the, uh... The berry winter wit beer, or whatever. Arctic berry wit beer, or whatever. So that... That, uh... The, that's the beers that I've had so far from my stock and all very good products. I think they're a great brewery They're one of my favorite breweries in the world So I don't have a light on but I'm getting a very dark uh, red Very dark red like a, a deep mahogany color uh, in this beer um, I get I get like some orange highlighting at the bottom, but that's roughly about it. Um, there's some bubbles dancing around, uh, some light to medium carbonation going on, I think. Bubbles sticking to the glass. And this head, I'm really a fan of this head. Um, really a lot of tight knit uh, bubbles sticking together. A real uh, creamy, frothy head. Uh, I really like it. I'm a fan of these kinds of heads. Usually I expect them on a stout or a porter. Um, leave some lacing. There's a little bit of alcohol legs left behind too. I'm curious to see the ABV now. 8% alcohol. Okay. Um, and the, the head is also like a very uh, light beige. It's not really white or off-white even. It's, it's like a very light beige tan color. Oh wow, this smells beautiful. It's very bready and malty. I get I get spices in there for sure. 
I get all like that herbal spice scent. They use Bavarian hops, so I, I'm gonna say just buy this nose and buy the malts. Not the malts, the, the hops they more than likely use. Uh, I I'm, I'm think I'm getting like a floral hop scent. I believe I smell the Angelica, but uh, I can't, I couldn't really describe it to you. I do think it's pleasant on the nose. Uh, it just has, it just adds another, another layer of complexity to that herbal flavor. Or the herbal aroma, I should say. And that's it. Uh, no roast, no um, earthiness, no bitterness, no nothing like that. Just just a lot of aroma. Uh, a lot of aroma, excuse me, a lot of uh, floral scents, I, I believe, coming from the hops with, with some herbal spicy stuff. And um, I don't mean like spicy as in peppery spicy, hot sauce spicy. Uh, more like a spice bread type thing, cooking spices, and then I believe I'm smelling the Angelica. But I've never, I couldn't like describe to you what that smells like. I've just never, uh, even, I don't even know what Angelica looks like. I'll have to look that up and, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to smell some in the future. Let's get into the best part of a beer review. I'm pretty thirsty. Wow, this is dang good. I, I like this already. So the first thing that really comes to my mind is for, uh, you know, at 8%, it's not the biggest, uh, deadliest beer in the world, but it's definitely a dangerous beer. Um, uh, I can taste just a kiss of alcohol, but not too much. Uh, this really drinks like a beer, like uh, an easy drinking, like 4% ale or something. The viscosity on this thing uh, is, I'd say light to medium, but leaning way towards more light. It's not a thin beer, but it's I don't really think it's got a nice, solid, medium grade body either. There's kind of a drying mouthfeel going on, um, a, a finish, I should say. It's it's kind of creamy. Like it's it's a really wet beer, and it, which I know that's silly to say when you're describing liquids, but. Um, the mouthfeel is kind of a creamy wetness, way more wet, but all, you know, there's not any lactose in here, uh, by any means, but I think it just kind of goes along with that body. It's not the thinnest body in the world. And so it just kind of gives, at least to me, kind of a, just a small creaminess going on there. Uh, and then the swallow is kind of wet, but then it kind of, it, it just a slow, nice, uh, casual drying effect uh, as the beer lingers. And then the flavor of this thing is just incredible. Um, it's a very malt forward beer. Um, here, let me go in one more time. I wouldn't say the malt is overbearing or even like the star of the show. It's definitely uh, the spices are the feature ingredient in here and more than likely the Angelica ties in with that. It, and, but it, it dances, uh, it's, it's very cohesive with the malt because the malt um, 
you know, I don't always find like the floral and spice uh, ingredients to be like a main feature of a beer usually. They don't tend to be very bold when they're in a beer. And with this malt not being incredibly caramel, um, it's 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 a very light caramel, a very uh, it, it's there. It's not in the background per se. It's just kind of cohesive. It all kind of plays together very nicely. Um, I feel like the malt is putting the spices on display rather than like being a co-star of the show or um even overpowering the spice I, I think it lets the angelica and the spice and even um that floral component from the hops really uh, be featured and i think that makes this a tasty delicious beer um I think Scotch Ale drinkers need to drink this, for sure, without a doubt. Um, this is a style I've got to explore more. We have, oh, I'm going to screw the name up, Benhaven, ben, Benny Lavin, oh. Anyways, we've got one of the traditional Scotch Ales at my favorite store. Um, and then I've got to track down Oscar Blues, Old Chubb. And just kind of, I've I've got to try Scotch Ales this year. I'm really, I was weary of this style for some reason. I just was never attracted to Scotch Ales for some reason. I mean, I love whiskey and Scotch. I think the culture of Scotland is amazing. Uh, I've got some Scotch in my heritage. Not enough for me to say I'm Scottish, but uh, I come from that background. But for some reason, I've just never was attracted to the to the beer style. Um, and I was even kind of reluctant to buy this beer, but I forced myself to try it, to, to buy it. And man, I just feel stupid for ignoring this style now. It, it's, it's a great beer. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about a grade here. I'm gonna give it a four point seven five out of five. I'm gonna be honest with myself. I don't like to grade beers on well, this is the first Scotch Ale I've ever had, so I better not give it a 5 out of a 5 because I just know I'm going to try something better in the long run. I don't like thinking like that. I feel like I'm cheating a beer of what it truly deserves. Um, and I don't like compare. I, I do it. I think we all do it as beer reviewers, but I don't like comparing beers to other beers. I like to give every beer its moment in the sun. Um... There's also, uh, I've given the grade, but I also want to say there is a mild, that just mild German, maybe a noble hoppish um, bitterness that, that kind of lingers as as the beer is drying and right at the end. Um, I've already give, gave one recommendation, Scotch Ale lovers, uh, I do think you Christmas beer people would love this. Um, like fans of Wales Banana Bread or uh, I had the Anderson Valley Winter Solstice uh, things of that nature or um, Samuel Adams White Christmas things with cooking spices in them or uh, I think uh, pumpkin ale fans would love this um, I think Amber Ale fans would love this, you know, you should right down the middle, like, uh, Hot Ford, Caramel, Amber Ale fans should try this. Uh, I think this is a well-rounded beer. Uh, I, I feel like, um, 
I feel like maybe this, this might not be for a day one beer drinker, like a novice. I feel like you're not going to really... What am I trying to say? I feel like you're going to miss the mark on this beer. Just being somebody who's never really drank beer and knows what to expect with something like this. But as I said, uh, and, and I hate to repeat, but the pumpkin ale crowd, um, the Christmas beer crowd, with the, the Christmas spice beer crowd, any spiced beer fan, uh, scotch ale crowd, uh, your, your amber ale crowd, um, I think, uh, I think y'all would like this beer for sure. Um, great pickup, 4.75. Out of a five, uh, Einstock, we heavy. Until next time, guys. Cheers.